Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and Armageddon Days, part two. A um, couple of questions have come out from various people I've been speaking to with regards to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the conspiracies that are currently surrounding it. Uh, deep fake pics of Zelensky um, that the visual effects that are being used happened in another war years ago. And also considering that for the last eight years, Putin has in part been trying to uh, invade Ukraine, southern U from the southern section of Ukraine, saying that he's going in and making a whole new area for Russian separatists of Ukraine. If you want to be Russian, I would suggest one moves back to Russia as a whole move. If you don't want to move back to Russia, become a Ukrainian, get a citizenship. But these borders were realigned back to historic proportions pre-USSR, and Putin is having a problem with this. The psychological warfare um, has been happening for a long time, and it can go back as far as uh, Goebbels in World War II. A lie told once remains a lie, but told a thousand times, it eventually becomes the truth. And the British and the Allies had their own versions of propaganda as well with regards to how they dropped pamphlets over Germany and Berlin or um, and they made the Nazis and to be a, a certain type of enemy. Um, and of course, Hitler had his reasons for being um, a white supremacist. Um, and that still it permeates our societies around the world even today. Um, and back in World War II, Hitler hit Poland first um, in 1939, and it took him months before the invasion, the invasion of Poland was absolute. And it took even longer for the rest of the world or Europe or Britain to join the war, uh, which time China and Japan were already at war. Uh, and the psychological warfare was even used in 2015, 2016 through the, the, the Brexit campaign. It's by telling a lie once and then just repeating that lie till the event that a certain percentage of the population is going to believe it. Others may not know what to believe. And still yet others will go in the opposite direction. But nonetheless, uh, the psychological warfare has been taking place for an awful long time. And now we are in Ukraine. And uh, as you see in the marked yellow areas in Mariupol and Crimea and Donbass, um, they have since in, uh, reached certain target areas around here and they're desperately still seeking Odessa. But this is not about the separatists in Russia or um, anything to do with ideologies of communism or religion, or this is about Putin deciding that he wants to turn the clock back 70 years. And by saying that these are Nazis stopping the Russian separatists making their area Russian. Now, as a unique country with its own borders, even if it is neutral on wars with Russia or, or supposed to have some neutrality, Russia itself has given no surety to Ukraine about what it will or will not do. And if they're supposed, if Ukraine is supposed to have a level of neutrality for Russia, Russia should by equal terms historically have now that same neutrality in Ukraine. And yet it is attacking them. It is blowing up civilian areas. It is blowing up hospitals. And it's not getting any better. Um, Alana also asked about the media. How is the media showing this? And we can go through so much media. Um, and it's difficult to know 
who's bombing who and unless you're actually seeing it live and happening in action and they're live streaming this and we've already seen that kind of thing being done with shock and awe in Iraq but these are apartment buildings these aren't military buildings in Ukraine and these pictures come from Reuters um, most of the pictures that I have here today are from Maripol and areas that have in part or are on their way to being um, having Russian troops a little bit closer than just bombing them from afar. But even so, you've got men and women on the streets um, still doing fire service and rescue and medical and feeding people. This is a multitude of stuff while bombs are raining down on them. And some of these bombs aren't even going off. I mean, this one didn't go off. And in London, literally 40 or 50 years after the war, they dug up a World War II bomb. How many of these are we going to be digging up 50 years from now? Granted, the Ukrainians are making some headways uh, against some of the um, Russian troops um, because unlike the regimented uh, methodology of the Russian army, or relatively regimented methodology of the Russian army, um, the Ukrainians are using civilian forces and while they do have some traditional military action going on, a large percentage of guerrilla warfare, which is, uh, which, you know, they're now armed, they are armed by their military and their police, and they are going out and fighting back in a guerrilla style format. Uh, and back in World War II, the, you know, in Germany and in Britain and even when the USA joined the world, you're teaching children to hide under desks, put on gas masks, and to save themselves from the outcomes of these wars. Um, we end up with our prisoners or our wounded. Um, these are all sad reflections of a time gone past the black and white photos and the colors ones from Reuters or from recent events in Ukraine, and it just doesn't get any worse than this. But it's not the only war that has its biblical connotations, which we'll go into in the next bit, um, and how these actions line up geopolitically Meantime, please like, <laughs> subscribe, and we'll be back with you in our next episode. Thank you very much.